This is all about fall gardening storage and organization, but I'm doing it this time of year instead of in the spring because now is when you can go to any of your home centers, garden centers, and a lot of times they will have so many of these supplies on sale. So you can stock up now to use both in your fall gardening, but also have them on hand for spring gardening. And as you guys know, I continue to try to find ways to be better organized in my own garden because I am just terrible about it. I'm always losing things. And one of my character flaws is I absolutely hate hunting for things. So I'm hoping that this will make a difference. So I am doing a very dirty job today and I'm cleaning out this cabinet. Now this is in the potager. This is by the back set of French doors. I had this cabinet built a million years ago. You can see how it's fallen off its hinges and we had to reattach it. I like these kind of twig poles. I think I got these at Home Depot years ago. It's weathered and I like the way it looks. And it's also great for just storing some things out here in the potager so I don't have to go back to my garage or into my tool shed or whatever to get what I need. So that said, I've got this here and it is it has been really a mess, so I'm cleaning it up. One thing I have found indispensable, and that I'm definitely trying to have a number of this, these located around the garden, and that is basically just a little hand whisk broom and a dust pan, because these are invaluable. If you're potting something, if you've spilled a little bit of dirt, you don't want to get out the heavy blower, these are great for cleanup. And they were also great for cleaning up these shelves that get filled with lots of droppings from the trees surrounding them and just garden de debris and bugs. Uh, tip, if you are doing this yourself in your own garden, in your own storage shed or whatever, be careful. Check first to see if you've got wasps or anything like that because, yes, I have had a wasp's nest in here and there's been some wasps flying around here. I think they've been eradicated, but you definitely want to do your due diligence beforehand. So what am I putting in here? Well. Depending on what your zone is, you may or may not be able to put liquid products in your storage uh, cupboard, depending on you know whether or not they will freeze, those kinds of situations. But nevertheless, in mine, it's typically not a problem, and I like to be able to have things at the ready. What I used to do was have oh, different kinds of fertilizers, chemicals, insecticides, different locations in the garden, some in my garage, some here, some there. I have finally found that even though those might be location, more convenient by location, in other words, they're closer to where I'm working, I nevertheless still have to look in multiple places to find what I'm looking for because I can't remember where I stored it. So now all of my fertilizers, all of my sprays, everything, my insecticidal dusts and such are definitely going to be stored in here. And here are some of the products that I have, some of which might be on sale for you at Target or at Home Depot as they, as they put their seasonal things on sale and they're getting ready for the holidays. So I've got some berry tone and on this shelf, you guys, I'm putting all of my fertilizers. So I've got most of them corralled over here in a Brex, oh, I'm not really sure what this is, a Brex box, let's just say. I've got my Osmocote, I've got my Soil Diva, Yes, I do periodically for my containers. I do use miracle Grow. Some of you will be aghast, but I use it sparingly, and I use it only in my containers, not in my beds. I've got some other Brex slow-release fertilizers. So basically, this is going to be my primarily my fertilizer shelf. My insecticidal things I don't use as often, so they will go up on the top shelf. Those that I use more often may go over here. So one thing that I did, excuse me, Stuart, 
First of all, I blew out the shelves because they were pretty buggy with my Little Works blower. Most of the time I'm using my Lithely blower, which is a little bit more powerful. But if you have trouble with hand or arm strength and you want something that works well, but isn't quite so heavy, or you're dealing in smaller places where something that's a little bit more petite is more effective, then I would highly recommend one of these works blowers. And Stuart, let's try to put a link above for it. Okay, so I've gotten the debris out of here. What else do I have? I've got some Sluggo. And this is definitely something that I might use year round, plus it doesn't fit on this top shelf. So I'm gonna put my Sluggo in here. I have some lime sulfur spray. This is for things like uh, black spot, powdery mildew, those kinds of things for your fruit trees. I'm gonna put that up here because I don't use it very often. It is organic. I've got some Eco Smart insecticidal spray that you just attach to your hose end. I'm going to put that here because I'll probably do one more spray this season along with some Monterey, also garden insect spray. You can see I've already stocked up on some of the sales. So I'm going to put that in here. I've got my BT spray. This is also called Thuricide or Bacterial Thuringiensis. It's for those pesky budworms. Uh, I use it this time of you very, very sparingly because I don't in any way want to harm any of the monarchs or swallowtails, any of those pollinators. So I use this very sparingly, primarily for budworms. So I'm going to put this in here as well. The concentrate is here. It's a liquid concentrate. So I'll put it next to that bottle. Down here, I have my garden tools for a quick grab. I'll have some very dirty garden gloves. Eventually, I will wash these, but I'll put those in here as well. I've got some of my Captain Jack's dust. Now, this is actually gonna go inside. Why? Because I have lost the closure to it and I don't want it to absorb the humidity from the air and that will solidify the powder into large chunks. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna enclose it in maybe a plastic bag or something and then I'll bring it back out here. And I also have some insecticidal wipes, disinfecting wipes, not insecticidal, but disinfecting wipes. Stuart thought that was funny that I keep here by my garden tools. So if I have to disinfect my pruners, I've got those here. I've got some wilt proof. So when I prune my boxwood and I don't want it to brown or if I want to spray some green cuttings that I'm going to use at the holidays, I've got that in here. Let's see, I'll probably put that down there. I've got some more BT spray here, and notice that I do write it on the bottle. This is one of those locations where I had some in the front, I had some in the back. I've decided to just put them all together so I easily know where I can find them. This is some sunscreen, so when I get out here like today, and I haven't put my sunscreen on yet, this is perfect for when you do pajama gardening. You're out here in your pajamas with your coffee first thing in the morning and before you know it, it's high noon and you haven't gone in to put on real clothes, but you still need to wear your sunscreen. So I keep sunscreen out here. Okay, this is brilliant. This is uh, a little gift from my friend Roger. So if you've got, which I have, uh, little projectiles of things like a trumpet vine or wisteria or, a volunteer tree that you can't get out and you don't want to use any serious chemicals just randomly and broad spread. If you want to be very targeted with it, you just put some brush killer or something like this, which is pretty toxic. You just put it into a little squeeze bottle that has a brush on it. Isn't this a wonderful, great idea? And Roger put this together for me because he knew I was battling the wisteria and the uh, trumpet vine. And he said, this is pretty powerful, but I'm gonna put it in very targeted areas. So this is brilliant. I'm gonna keep this down here with my other insecticides. My neem oil extract, I use pretty frequently. And what I'll do is just save 
when my insecticidal soap spray bottles or whatever kind of spray bottles I have are finished and empty, then I use neem extract to resupply my spray bottles so I can use those. I should probably push them out like this so they're ready to spray and go and I'm going to keep my neem extract in here also. I love this Centurion sprayer. It's battery operated and it is wonderful if you have problems with hand strength and you want real uh, very easy application. This is wonderful. We'll try to put a link below. I'll keep that down here. This is I think Oh, this, I should have marked this. See, this is why you need to really mark it on the bottle. This is some of my top buxus. I don't have it out here, but my top buxus fertilizer that comes in packets and you dilute them in water. I'll put a link below and I use this on my boxwood. It is supposed to help prevent boxwood blight and just ensure healthier boxwood. So I will put this I'm going to put this like this because I need to replenish it and I'll use that a little bit later. As I said, I do sometimes use miracle Grow, so I'll put my applicator in here. I am adding, and of course I haven't got to it yet, but I have some more spaghetti drip line that I'm going to add to the potage to tap into the half inch or three quarter inch drip line that's in there. I'm going to add this as soon as I have a chance and so I want it to be out here in the potage where I'll be using it. So this is all of my irrigation supplies in this bag up here. I've got another dial and spray for when I have to use, for example, this lime sulfur spray or some kind of uh, insecticidal soap. I've got my triple phosphate here that I like to use in very late winter, early spring to encourage buds. So that's a fertilizer. I'm keeping it over here. These are the mosquito bits that I like so much using for fungus, gnat, fungus gnats in the wintertime when I bring my plants in. You ask me how I prepare my plants to bring them indoors for the holidays. One thing I do is I sprinkle some of this mosquito bits. It works brilliantly against fungus gnats. This was a tip you guys told me and it also works somewhat on mosquitoes, better on fungus gnats. I'll put that up there. I have, uh, so I, I bought this from Gardener Supply because I wanted to protect the figs on my Little Miss Figgy Southern Living Plant Collection uh, fig trees. I had a number of figs this year, so I'm keeping this in here. And I've got more fertilizer, Espoma product bloom. This is really something you want to look for on sale at Target or any of your stores. I'll keep that in here. This goes inside. If I have extra quick connect parts or things of that nature, then I'll keep them in a basket in here where I can grab them. I will also probably get a little hook where I can hang my dust pan and my whisk broom right here. I don't have a hose anymore, Stuart. This goes to your mom. She was asking if she could have it. Yes, she can. I've got some seven dust. I don't use it very frequently, but when I need something a little bit stronger than my Captain Jack's, then I will use this. Put that up there. This will go inside and in short order, I also have, I keep these out here because if I, if my other fence post caps start to rot or oh, get too distressed, I've got extras of these. So I will keep these up in here along with my irrigation stuff. And in short order, I've kind of cleaned up this space. I don't keep any of my long handled tools in there. I keep them in a different location and I also have learned not to keep these kneel pads in there because they get too buggy and they get all sorts of spider webs and stuff on them. I keep those in a different location. But this is pretty nice you guys. It looks fairly organized. It's been debugged and if I find anything on sale, something is sticking out, but if I find anything on sale at my store I can easily stick it into my freshly organized cabinet. 
And here is your fashion epilogue. If you don't want to watch, go on to the next video. So my sunglasses today are Ray-Bans, Aviators. These are probably my favorite pair of sunglasses. I love these earrings. These are new. I got these from a darling pop-up shop that was in an Airstream at the Hatch Chili Festival at the Powerhouse on Sunday, Stuart. Um, and it, it was called Ponderosa. And I'm going to try to put a link or a, a swipe up in stories. The cutest little shop. A mother-daughter business. And the daughter was nine years old. Absolutely precious. Uh, my top. My top came from a thrift store. It's Lucky Brand. I think the thrift store was one of my favorites in Colorado. My jeans are made well. My shoes are Tom's. I love these in the fall. They're so comfortable and I, I don't feel bad wearing them in the garden. And let's see my bracelet. My bracelet was a gift from someone. I love it. It's got blue stones in it. And this is one instance where I don't have to layer bracelets because it comes pre-layered. So there you go. There's my outfit du jour.